Hello, welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about how to use some isometric um, exercises uh, to improve not just the strength of muscles but how you can really uh, improve like uh, it's sort of a safer way without the huge weight of uh, being compressing joints so it's really effective for several people for several different populations especially obviously rehabilitation injury but also for beginners and even older adults it's a great way to bring in resistance without the uh, risk of loads compressing or ruining things so look at some examples of this how you might use the squat so the, obviously the first one just being simple body weight squat you know and just using a holding tempo of roughly you know between three and five seconds maybe as long as 10 but usually about five seconds is enough and you just you can it guarantees that you can get like pretty good range of motion you can even work partial range of motion as well so if you if there's an issue where there's uh, some pain you can work in that limited range to avoid the painful position and you know and if and if the if you're good enough you might be able to get into that lower point you can even manipulate the angles and position so you may even use heel, heel plates to help this person um, you know and develop some strength in, in that regard so you know so some normal tempo speed on the squat would normally look like that you know, so um, bear in mind this video slowed down a bit but you can really see the difference in the tempo so that would be like the um, the standard version of the squat but let's say there's some issues and we really want to manipulate and build some strength into the quadriceps but it's very difficult to do on a standard one because it's hard to get in the angles where we might use the decline squat and you know really just holding that position there for quite a bit you know and and again you can see how the the angle of her body really improved a lot in this position with the ramp it just allowed her sit a bit more upright so it gets a lot more work into the quadriceps which is where we we might be identifying there's some significant weakness and we we're just trying to rebuild that again you see how it's so much easier to sit upright in this one than it is on the floor um, you know and you can really work through that painful position one of the best things about isometric training is that it's effect on on this couple of real things that people aren't aware of firstly the the uh, the slow movements really improve the the um, makeup of co connective tissue and which especially the collagen fibers which is not so much the muscles it's the stuff that connects the muscles to the bone so the tendons and especially so how that the um, how they re reform after they've been injured often they might not um, develop this sort of cross pattern weaving. That makes them really structurally strong. This would be normal uh, without the holding tempo there. Um, just to give you an idea of the difference in the speeds of it. If I just pause this video for a second, but they're basically like the the collagen should have like a nice basket weaving feeling to it, where where when often when it's not um, repaired correctly, it 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 doesn't have this basket. It's sort of more like parallel weaving. So, and which makes it like more prone to re-injury. So, the isometric training is a really great way to um, ensure that the structure of the collagen um, binds together much more effectively to prevent further re-injury and makes it much more resistant to the stress of um, tension. So, from force or speed or whatever you're using. So, now another version of the tempo squat would be where we're slightly introducing. In an unstable um, environment you can still get good range of motion with this because there's no extra load just the stability is challenged a little bit well not a little bit but a lot but the uh, the in the beauty of this is if there's a weak or injured side this really balances that out it really tries to stop the dominant leg from taking over the movement so as much as the balance is a skill it's possible it's arguably more about the um, trying to get a 50 50 split between the left and right leg so I don't always use this obviously obviously I would really be probably starting with the ramp squat moving to a body weight squat and then possibly to this depending on the person before I apply loaded resistance especially coming back from injury um, I probably wouldn't use this with an older adult but I might use this with a sports person for example all right so 
um, a great way to to really bring in the different types of uh, squatting positions using this isometric holding, uh, just to create that huge tension on the on the um, on the muscles and the, uh, like I said earlier, more about the connective tissue. So I'll show you a couple of other videos um, that will on different other other areas of the body. So we'll look mainly at this one with the legs, but we'll look at some of the upper body ways that you can use this tempo change to really um, Im improve the the way that the, the, the body is sort of going to rebind everything together more effectively for movement. So very underrated part of rehabilitation training. All right, so let's have a look at a couple of other leg examples. Okay, so here's an example of using a calf raise with some isometric and eccentric strengthening. So the the isometric part is there, so you could be holding it in a you know three or five second contraction, but it's actually much more beneficial using an eccentric contraction with with this, which is where you're deliberately using the lowering phase. And it's often in this lowering phase where the the tendons of the Achilles muscle, the Achilles tendon calf strains or that are really exposed because they're, they're, that's where they're, the cushioning phase to control impact with the ground is at its greatest. So um, if they're not, um, haven't rebinded very well, then like we, uh, we spoke about with the squat, this, this uh, the injury is very likely, you know, and so this is a great, it's a very simple exercise. Again, don't need any load, just your body weight is enough. and. You could start with two legs before progressing to one. Obviously, the one is going to show any difference between left and right. So a normal tempo would look more like that. You know, right? So you sort of got that normal speed. But if we're really trying to emphasize the lowering phase, we really want like a five to ten second lowering. Um, you could in, in include the isometric part in this as well. Um, but I'll probably find the eccentric attraction is better with the calf. All right, so let's look at a different one again. All right, so here's the basic hip extension, which we've covered so many times with regards to glutes and hamstrings. It's probably, this is more, way more effective for glutes just because the hamstrings can't really contribute too much because the knee doesn't get to extend. You know, so it never really can get into, it's really inhibited from doing too much. It'll just overload though when the glutes are weakened. If they're, if the glutes are not performing their role when they're in this holding position here, um, that's often where you might see the cramp come about. If the glutes are not performing their, the, the, you know, the lion's share of the movement as such. So um, obviously quadriceps are really ineffective in this movement. So it's really everything to do with the glutes with a bit of help from hamstring. All right, so the holding pattern is really useful. This would be like the normal tempo that you would see. All right, so you're just going easily up and down. But there, this is a classic example of where the uh, the holding pattern is way more effective, and even more so than adding load. On the floor, we get a reduced range of motion. So uh, you know we can move to being this on the bench, and and in this example, using a single leg hold. The single leg hold, just like we saw with the squat sort of exposes the, the weaker leg from the the, um, the, the dominating leg, um, allowing you to get like a lot more, and obviously get a bit of lat lateral pelvic con tilt control, so a little bit more con um, demanding, um, and that would be the normal tempo there, all right? So a very good way to get that connective tissue like we've spoken about already. Also bone density is another thing that really gets bring into play with this. Um, so obviously, you know, like a reduced range of motion on that, you would get an increased range of motion with this same hip extension, um, going, moving onto a Swiss ball or even resting your back on the bench. Um, so before you're adding like the big barbells and stuff, you can just work really effectively through this and getting that nice holding tempo at the top. Really getting, this one really gets a lot of work into the glute medius and maximus, where some of the standing ones will really emphasize more glute medius. So if someone, if we all known, if you know that there's real issues with the glute max, this may be the best choice, even though it looks very simple. A lot of people under, it's very underrated. So when you start adding load later on, you really notice how much harder it gets. And you could do this same tempo with the barbell when you're adding a barbell, like in the hip thrust type exercises. All right, so 
very very um, effective exercise, you know, and then just trying to get good control of the core in this position as well. So some people who really overextend through the lower back because the glute's just not contributing enough, maybe the weakened core, but usually it's really that weakened uh, glute max uh, not doing its line share. And obviously in the single leg stuff, that's when you often see the cramp in the hamstring. All right, so it's a great way in the beginning. This is why these are great for beginners really expose them to the intensity of the strength training, but without the risk of uh, the loads compressing joints or um, or reducing their range of motion. So you can really maintain the range of motion. And in, with injury, you can work within the range of motion. So knowing where, the, you know, and really allowing that person who maybe overextends through the lower back to feel where they can gain control and sort of know that point of no return that they must stop at earlier where they can really feel the glute kicking in, all right? And, you know, and this is, like with all these exercises so far, really effective way of um, getting back into really good strength and form. All right, so let's have a look at the last one, which is probably the most difficult. Okay, so this last one is when we move from standing with one leg. So we've looked at squats that had two leg stance and we've looked at the hip extension which was one leg but it was lying down. So now we've got like a one leg standing up. So this is where we will cheat on the balance component of it and just working through good range of motion and having that holding position that right here um, where we can challenge the quadriceps, glutes and hamstrings. So the hip extension really just going to challenge the hamstrings and glute, or glutes mainly where this one we can really work through limited range, especially like if we have issues in the squat with the one knee in particular, we can really pick on that weakened side in this position, all right, without the stability and balance being a problem that to contend with. This is a really, really effective way, and this would be the normal tempo speed to give you an idea of the difference in the speeds, but really, really we're trying to work through that, that challenging range right here you know, and sometimes what I'll do is, which I didn't show, haven't shown in this video, I might get that person to try to move that knee forward slightly. Just that difference in this angle here from there to there, and, and you'll find that their body will sit a little bit more upright. That, that will get a huge sort of amount of workload into the quadriceps just above the knee, which is often where it's atrophied and weakened the most. So you can really work through really carefully in that point where you know that it's going to be an issue and uh, it's not extreme sort of pain like with the barbell or a dumbbell or even just moving too quickly through it where they can avoid it. They can really sense where it's going to be and move really subtly into it. Um, it's quite a very effective way of, and, and again, the tempo is of this slow holding stuff really builds the incredible strength that you that'll set you up for moving forward much more effectively when things start to, to bind together. And as long as you're working on your mobility and that around it, you know, it, um, you can really do a lot of great things with this. And, and obviously in a single leg, the glutes, you can't underestimate that. The longer this goes, the, this actually becomes a huge part of the, the exercise as well. So we sort of get this double whammy of this with a little bit of hamstring. It's really going to be glutes and quads mm -hmm. in this, the two sort of areas known for being problems in both the hip and knee type injuries. All right, so so there'll be examples of some lower body ways of using isometric training. We'll do a second video later on with some of the variations of how to do this with upper body, but that gives you a really good sort of intro into how effective it can be um, if you've got, if, especially if you're someone who's constantly getting re-injured all the time. And it's maybe a good thing to step away from the loaded things and really work with these slower control type movements and gradually build your way back up to the harder things. All right. Um, all right. So I hope you've enjoyed that video and we'll see you on our next one.